Hello there guys, welcome to another of my live videos and as you um, all uh, know, we have uh, got um, a massive uh, game coming up today Man United uh, do go away to Liverpool at Anfield and it kicks off um, at half past four and you know, like I said, Liverpool and Man United is um, the biggest uh, game um, in English football because they are the two most successful clubs in England historically Now obviously the other day I gave you my preview for the game I also give you my reaction uh, to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, press conference. But on this video, I am going to uh, give you uh, my score uh, prediction, who I think you know is uh, going to uh, win uh, the game. My score prediction is going to be 3-1. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go 3-1 uh, to Liverpool. And as you all know, I'm a Man United fan, but obviously I've got um, a lot of um, honesty about me. You know, I just think Liverpool um, are too good. You know, the strides ahead of us um, at the moment. Of course, Liverpool did beat us in this fixture last season at Anfield by three goals to one. And obviously, you know, reflects on that uh, game that had ended um, Jose Mourinho's two and a half year uh, tenure um, at the football club. Uh, but hopefully, you know, we can get something um, off Liverpool. You know, Liverpool are sitting top of the Premier League. You know, they've won 20 games out of 21. Uh, they've uh, they're unbeaten in 38 Premier League games. You know, I think Solskjaer's admired that, you know, Liverpool are breaking records. Uh, he's also come out and said that uh, Liverpool have not yet matched, you know, our side under um, Alex Ferguson. So he said they can't be really uh, called great. You know, so if Liverpool win today, by the way, they do extend their unbeaten run to 39 in the Premier League. They're 51 games unbeaten at Anfield. Uh, so obviously, they've gone now nearly three years without losing at Anfield because the last time they lost at Anfield was to Crystal Palace back in April 2017. Liverpool are sitting now, is it 14 points in front of Leicester? Uh, around four, oh, 16 points, sorry, in front of Leicester. Thir uh, 13 points in front of Man City with a game in hand. So even if Liverpool, you know, don't win this game today, you know, I don't think it will change out in terms of the league. I still, you know, very convinced, you know, that they, they will uh, win uh, the league. Liverpool have, are on course to win their first ever Premier League title, and you know, because they haven't won it all in all for around uh, 30 uh, years. And Solskjaer, you know, give his overarching view on that aspect. You know, he says, you know, it won't take Man United another 30 years to win another uh, Premier League title. You know, we haven't uh, won uh, the Premier League since 2013, so we haven't won it now for uh, seven uh, years. The last time we won it was um, under the um, Alex uh, Ferguson um, era. Well, it was in um, Alex Ferguson's uh, last uh, season. On my video yesterday, I gave you a bit of uh, team news uh, building um, up uh, to the game, didn't I? You know, Solskjaer um, has given us some team news. I was reading uh, some reports regarding Marcus Rashford yesterday night. Uh, and I don't think Rashford um, is going to be involved in this game, of what I saw, because it actually said that uh, Rashford did not was not part of the squad um, at the team hotel ahead um, of the Liverpool uh, game. Rashford um, has got um, a back injury that he sustained in uh, the 1-0 win against the uh, Wolves on Wednesday night. And I did say, didn't I, and I'm hopeful that his uh, injury um, is not uh, too uh, severe. Uh, Solskjaer did say he couldn't tell him if he was going to be available or not during his press conference. You know, he said he was going to be further assessed and the other day was um, a recovery day for Marcus Rashford. He also said the same thing regarding Maguire, you know, when he had um, a hip injury. Uh, but his hip injury, you know, uh, was only a uh, minor, it wasn't uh, too uh, severe, you know, luckily. But, you know, like I said, you know, Rashford has been one of um, our best players this season. He's been in absolutely scintillating form. He's been in scintillating form. You know, Rashford, I think, is now on, what, 201 appearances for the football club in all competitions. He's scored, like, 63 senior goals since he broke into the senior squad back in 2016. And I think he's on around 17 or 18 goals in all competitions uh, so far uh, this season. And Rashford, you know, sustained a few injuries as a Man United player. He was injured earlier on in the season. I think he was injured, all, injured also last season was Marcus Rashford. So I said, didn't I? I'm hopeful that his injury is not too severe. But even if he could play some parts of the game, you know, that would be very, very good. I think if he would be available, I think if, if he was to start, he wouldn't, you know, play the full 90 minutes. He'd probably play like 50 to 60 minutes and come off or, you know... That's what I think uh, will um, happen, but I don't know if if Rashford, you know, is even uh, going to uh, play. We've also got some positive news, though. You know, Solskjaer's confirmed now that Eric Bay and Fossil Mensu are both fit for Man United. 
because uh, they've been playing for the under-23s of a um, fossil mentor, but now I do believe that they are ready for a first-team uh, match. And Bay uh, was out with an injury uh, since uh, pre-season, uh, so so far he's been out for the entirety of the season up until this point. Fossil Mensa was also out with an injury since he was on loan uh, with Fulham. But uh, Solskjaer um, has revealed that um, Fossil Mensa can play as a right back because he played um, as a right back uh, for Holland at the age um, of 19. Because <laughs> obviously Solskjaer had got asked if he's got any element of concerns regarding that full back position following the departure of Ashley Young. As you all know, I updated you the other day. Ashley Young has uh, joined um, Inter Milan. Uh, uh, Inter Milan have paid around uh, £1.5 million for him. Uh, Young has joined Inter Milan on a six-month deal with an option of a further year. And it's the third player that Inter Milan have purchased off us because they got Lukaku and Sanchez off us last summer. <laughs> so, yeah, he's officially um, an Inter Milan uh, player. But, you know, Solskjaer did um, praise Ashley Young, you know, because he said he was, a, he's, he was a long servant at the football club. You know, Young did enjoy eight and a half years at Man United. So this was his uh, current ninth season at the football club. Young made a total of 261 appearances for Man United in all competitions. I think he played around uh, 18 uh, games this season before he um, left. But, you know, I'm actually surprised that he left the football club, Ashley. And I said, didn't I, you know, we needed to get rid of him because he was one of the problematic players and he was he's obviously 34, he's 35 in the summer. But I'm surprised he left because, you know, Solskjaer said he was reluctant to let him go in this January transfer window. You know, I think the main explanation for that is is reflects on the injuries that Man United have got. I still, even if he hadn't gone in this January window, he would have probably gone in the summer when his current contract was due to expire with Man United. He did say at one point his move to Inter Milan could have been in doubt due to the swap deal with Roma. We actually tried convincing him to stay because it said we'd offered Ashley Young a new one-year extension but Young had reportedly you know, turned this uh, one-year um, extension uh, down. But, you know, we've got a variety of fullbacks in the team and Solskjaer doesn't really have any concerns regarding that fullback uh, position. You know, because we've also got Diego Dalot now that's back. He's a fullback. He sustained quite a few injuries this season, but now he's back, which is good. He's one of the backup options. Brandon Williams, of course, now is our first choice left back. Well, Solskjaer views him as his first choice left back. You know, I think he's a much uh, better solution than Luke Shaw. I think Luke Shaw's just returned to training because he's been out with illness. And I think he's also got um, a minor uh, hamstring uh, problem. But, yeah, so I don't really have any concerns uh, regarding uh, that uh, full-back uh, position. Obviously, you know, following the departure of Ashley Young, Harry Maguire is our new uh, permanent uh, captain. So the game today against Liverpool is going to be his uh, first uh, game um, as Man United uh, captain. And, you know, I think that was the right decision by the football club, you know, giving Harry Maguire uh, the captaincy. Because I think, you know, since we signed him from Leicester last summer, he's been um, a revelation for Man United and he's settled in really, really well. And you can say he has addressed our defensive uh, deficiencies. You know, the club overpaid for him, you know, we paid, what, £80 million for him. So he's the most expensive defender in the world. He's the second most expensive signed um, at the football club. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how he does uh, play uh, today. And obviously, you know, the three signings that we recommended in last summer, uh, Daniel, James, Pisaka and Maguire, you know, it's going to be their uh, first time playing um, at Anfield uh, today as Manchester United uh, players. But, you know, I think the three signings that we recommended in last summer anywhere have done really, really uh, well uh, for uh, Man United. I do believe today that, you know, the youngsters, you know, some of the youngsters should get their, their opportunities. So, you know, the youngsters that have... Uh, Broke into the senior squad not too long ago, such as Mason Greenwood. This is his first season in the senior squad. Mason Greenwood, Brandon Williams. Mason Greenwood, Brandon Williams. Angel Gomez, I think. Yeah, quite a few of the young players, you know. You know, it's going to be their um, first time uh, playing um, at Anfield, so it will be good to see, you know, how they uh, cooperate. Uh, we've still got uh, Tuan Zebe injured. It's a shame that he can't be involved. Solskjaer's confirmed he's still out, Tuan Zebe. I think he's been out for quite some time now. Rojo, I think he's still out uh, with injury. Marcus Rojo, he's still out with injury, yeah. I think Rojo's got some kind of 
uh, muscular problem. But like I said, Rojo sustained quite a few injuries as a Manchester United player. Paul Pogba and Scott Mott somewhere um, are still um, out. So we have still got uh, quite um, a lot of um, injuries. But it's not being excusable for how inconsistent we have been for the vast majority of this season. Uh, Liverpool themselves um, have also uh, got some injuries. Don't forget they've also got some injuries, but they've obviously know now got players uh, coming back from injury. I think it did confirm today that Liverpool uh, are set to have uh, Fabinho and Joe Matic back. Uh, I think they've still got uh, JJ Lovren, James Milner and Naby Keita out through injury. Uh, also, Chamberlain, not too long ago, just come back from injury from, for Liverpool. Chamberlain just come back. Shakiri's just come back for them. Yeah, I think Nathaniel Klein is still uh, out of injury. So Liverpool have had um, a lot of um, injuries uh, themselves uh, this season. But like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer approaches this game. This is Solskjaer's third, third, uh, third. Uh, this is Solskjaer's third appearance as Man United manager against Liverpool. So this is third game against Liverpool. This is a first term appearance at Anfield as Man United uh, manager. So it would be good to see as you know win. Uh, like I said, you know Jurgen Klopp's win ratio against Man United is extremely poor because since Jurgen Klopp got recommended into Liverpool, he has faced uh, Man United around ten times. He's only beaten us twice. He's lost two and there's been six draws. So there has been a lot of draws uh, between Man United and Liverpool in recent years. And, you know, our record at Anfield in recent years anyway isn't too good because, you know, we haven't won at Anfield since 2016 when Ray Rooney, of course, um, had scored uh, that uh, late goal. But, you know, I think, you know, we, we're going to put up a fight today against Liverpool. I think we'll put up a fight <coughs> because, obviously, you know, we've got belief. And Solskjaer's got belief, you know, reflecting on the two previous games against Liverpool at Old Trafford, you know, where we come close to beating them, you know, it was 1-1 earlier on in the season, where the only team this season to take any points from Liverpool, you know, it was 0-0 at Old Trafford last season, so you just uh, never, never uh, know um, in football, and you just uh, never, never uh, know, but I'm really, really um, looking uh, forward to the game, I think Solskjaer will go with a 4-2-3-1 formation, He'll go with a 4-2-3-1 formation, you know, because he's been going with that formation on a regular basis this season. You know, I know in the game at Old Trafford, he reverted to three at the back. And in that particular game, that seemed to have uh, suited um, our standards. But I think he'll go uh, with the 4-2-3-1 formation. But he'll make changes from the game against Wolves. I think he'll make quite a few changes, you know. In the, in the game against Wolves, he made around three changes from the 4-0 win against Norwich. But um, yeah, but we've done well against the elite opposition this season, like I've already said to you, but we haven't really replicated it against lowered opposition. So we need to start getting more results against lowered opposition. But we you know I've got to say we've done really, really well against the big teams for the vast uh, majority of the season. Uh, as by the way, you know, we're still in that top four race. You know, we need to get that top four this season. That's very um, imperative. Uh, it's very imperative that we get that top four this season. We are... Five points uh, behind uh, Chelsea. And Chelsea, of course, lost yesterday to Newcastle 1-0. So, yeah, so Solskjaer's got many expectations to exceed in his second year at the club. <coughs> and I think if we can get top four at the, end, by, at the end of the season, if we've got top four at the end of the season, if we've got some silverware on the board at the end of the season, then I think the club will be determined to give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer another season at Man United because this is his first full season at the club at the moment. So we want to get that top four. We want to try and win the Europa League because that's getting silverware on the board. Plus, that's another route to Champions League football. And also, we want to win uh, the FA Cup. I'd love Man United uh, to win uh, the FA Cup. I'm very sceptical that we're going to win the Cowboy Cup because we are 3-1 down to Man City from the first leg. You know, so I don't uh, see uh, Man United uh, winning uh, that if I'm going to be uh, quite uh, honest with you. But Solskjaer has given, uh, uh, given us an update on, you know, of our chances of beating Liverpool. He says, if we've got any chances of beating Liverpool today, we have to put a, we have to put a PSG-like performance out. So we have to replicate a performance that was showed against PSG last season when we did produce that miraculous comeback. Uh, when we was 2-0 down from the first leg, then we overcome a two-goal deficit and won 3-1 in the second leg. So you can say that's uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's most iconic moment um, as manager, uh, definitely. And also, uh, going into this game against Liverpool, we have uh, kept two clean sheets. You know, clean sheet against Wolves, 
clean sheet um, against Norwich. But the game against Wolves was a prime example that we can, you know, compete um, against the, you know, the big the big clubs. You know, we can't uh, do it. So, you know, don't fully uh, disregard uh, it uh, today. But I've got to say, you know, I admire Liverpool. I hate to admire them because I'm a Man United fan, but you've got to admire them, you know, the you know, the football they play, the goals they score, the defensively very, very um good. And like I've said on my recent videos, you know, Liverpool the difference between Liverpool and Man United is the comparison is is that Liverpool don't overpay for players. You know, the sensible their recruitment, the players a unit, but with us we don't do that, you know, we overpay for players. Prime example, 80 million for Maguire, 50 million for Fred, 89 million for Pogba, 40 million for Nemanja Matic. So we do um, overpay for our players. And we've spent a hell of a lot of money. I think we've spent nearly around a billion pounds on recruiting new players into the football club in the last six or seven years. Or is that, uh, you know, taking into account uh, what we have spent under um, Alex Ferguson? Not only that. We've also got our players um, on big uh, contracts. But we just, we've been inconsistent for the vast majority of this season. You know, from some people's perceptions, they'll say due to the injuries. And we've got a lot of young players in the squad that are developing and trying to improve. But I think another explanation is, is, you know, that we haven't been playing as a unit and we're not uh, playing them um, as a team. And that's obviously, you know, what's uh, letting us uh, down, basically. But we need to start putting uh, good uh, performances um, out. But, like I said, Jürgen Klopp's a really, really good uh, manager. You know, he's been at Liverpool quite a few years now. And, um, you know, at the moment, he's won three major honours with Liverpool. Most recently, Liverpool won the FIFA Club World Cup. This is why they have got a game in hand. I think their game in hand's against West Ham. They won the Super Cup earlier on in the season. And they won the Champions League at the end of last season. And Liverpool have won six Champions Leagues. So, Jürgen Klopp, um, obviously... He's uh, going to be winning his fourth trophy, uh, which is obviously you now uh, the Premier League. And that's obviously you know, Liverpool's priority is the Premier League. So they won't be too bothered about the FA Cup. Probably won't be too bothered about the Champions League. You know, they'd love to win it again. But, you know, the Premier League is definitely you know, Liverpool's uh, priority. And, you know, uh, Jordan Klopp hasn't managed many clubs. You know, Liverpool's on his uh, third uh, club. Uh, because obviously before he was at Liverpool, he was at Borussia Dortmund. I think he did win a couple of uh, titles uh, with Borussia Dortmund. And obviously before he was at Borussia Dortmund, he was at Mainz 05. So over the years and that, you know, Jürgen Klopp has uh, emulated himself up. But like I've said on my recent video, you know, Jürgen Klopp didn't settle in straight away. He was nowhere near uh, on the level as he is uh, now. Because when he first went into Liverpool, he was actually, you know, very, very um, poor. Yeah, like I said, his record after his first, what, 28 or 29 games was horrendous. I think it was as bad as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first 28, 29 games at Man United. So this is why maybe some people are taking into account we should give Solskjaer the time that he's demanding. <coughs> then maybe he can emulate into like um, Jürgen uh, Klopp. I don't see Solskjaer in Fulking Ferguson's legacy at the club. I don't think we'll ever be the team that was under Ferguson. Even if we was to be ever the team that was under Ferguson, it's going to take us several years. But I think disregarding who our manager is anywhere, We'd never be the team that we uh, was under Ferguson, but take into account as well, Ferguson didn't settle in straight away because Ferguson didn't win out in his first four years at the football club when we recommended him in from Aberdeen back in 1984. But, you know, look what he went and accomplished after that four-year period. You know, Ferguson is one of the greatest managers of all time. He's one of the greatest uh, managers um, of all time. The vast majority of our silverware we won came under Ferguson. You know, Ferguson controlled the transfer policies. He controlled the contracts. You know, he developed um, a lot of uh, young players. And I think Solskjaer replicates him in that aspect because Solskjaer still wants to continue the policy of recruiting young players to Manchester United, you know, like he did do last summer. And as it stands at the moment, we have got um, a lot of uh, young players in our squad. And that's one... Aspect to me that credit Sol that credit Solskjaer. He's got a lot of faith in his young players because he confirmed at the start of this season Solskjaer that the young players would get given their opportunities, and they have been given their opportunities. But there's young players who I think are going to become a success at the club. I think Mason Greenwood's going to become a going to become a success. 
you know, Mason Greenwood's on, what, 19 year goals for the football club this season, 20 odd first team appearances. Gareth Southgate has considered him for, you know, Euro 2020. Uh, Solskjaer said he needs to focus um, on Man United at the moment before he gets called up for, you know, the European Championships. But probably is good enough for the European Championship, reflecting on his good performances this season. He's only at the age of 18. You know, and I think as he develops more, he will emulate onto Rashford and Anthony Martial's level. But they are a good attacking trio, Greenwood, Martial and Rashford. But yeah, Greenwood's been absolutely yeah, fantastic for us. And Solskjaer thinks he'll enjoy a long and great career at Man United. But yeah, fair play to him. And I think he needs to start more in the Premier League, to be fair. And if obviously Rashford can't play today, then I think Greenwood should be uh, starting. And, um, you know... I think, you know, Brandon Williams has done well. Tuan Zebe has done well in the games he's played in. You know, Diego a lot. I can't really have a perception on Diego a lot because he hasn't really played much this season. James Garney, you know, has done quite well in the games um, he's played in. Chong, I've got element of concerns about Chong now. I think he's one of the players that Man United need to consider getting rid of. Um, well, we, maybe we should loan, it, loan Chong out because he's not um, at that level um, as yet. So, yeah, he's got a lot of faith in his uh, young uh, players. But my element of concerns about Solskjaer is, is that he has been tactically naive for the vast majority of the season. So, you know, he's, he doesn't really seem to have a plan B. You know, some of his substitutions and that have been uh, questionable. So that's my element of concern. And, you know, Solskjaer hasn't really got a pedigree behind him in terms um, of management. And that's not using an excuse saying that he's not good enough, you know, at Man United. Because maybe if he is given the time, he could become a success at Man United. But I do not uh, see uh, uh, that um, happening, to be uh, honest with you. You know, but he hasn't really got that pedigree behind him in terms of management. But my perception, reflecting on him when he was a player, is totally comparison to my perception as a manager. Because I thought as a player, he was fantastic for us. He enjoyed 11 years at the football club and he flourished under Alex Ferguson's uh, guidance. And, you know, we'll never forget what Solskjaer has done for the football club. We'll never forget about that. One of his most iconic moments as a player was back in 1999 when he won the treble with Man United. You know, he scored uh, the goal against Bayern Munich in the Champions League final. That got the club the treble. That's obviously, you know, one of the club's uh, greatest um, achievements. But, you know, I just don't see his managerial tenure, you know, working out um, at Man United, to be fair. You know, and I think, you know, the only reason we, we're sticking by him or we have stuck by him up until this point is reflecting on that he's a club legend. And I think in that aspect, our board are soft in their stance. Disregarding him being a club legend and that, I think Solskjaer probably would have uh, been uh, sacked uh, by uh, now. But I think if it had been any other manager, they would have been gone without a shadow um, of a doubt. Solskjaer's got around two and a half years left um, on his deal, by the way. Because <clears throat> when he'd been given the job permanently back in March, earlier on this year, he had signed a three-year contract worth around £7.5 million a year. And you can say that's one of the mistakes Man United did make, was giving him the job on a permanent basis. And, you know, he's been permanent manager now for almost 10 months as Solskjaer. Is it 10 months? He's been... You know, at Man United in, in total for 13 months, including the time when he was the interim manager in that three-month period where he did uh, really, really um, well. So, but yeah, and I think, you know, our board are determined to back Solskjaer in this January transfer window. They're also determined to back him in the summer. They're going to see who else he can uh, recommend in to uh, the football club because Solskjaer is still in the process of rebuilding this Manchester United team. Yes, he's still in the process of rebuilding this Manchester United team, but, you know, definitely our recruitment's got to improve because our recruitment has been poor for several years. And in that aspect, uh, the blame uh, stems uh, from uh, the board, you know. But definitely um, our recruitment um, has got to um, improve. And I said we've got to get the right calibre players to the football club this year that can elevate us forward and get us back, you know, to being uh, title contenders because, you know, we won't win the league for several years. I don't even think we'll, you know, challenge her for uh, the league. I think in the next couple of seasons, like I said, our aspirations will be that top four. You know, I said I, I expected us to enjoy expected us to enjoy a better season this season than what we saw last season because last season was a huge disappointment. We finished sixth. And I think last season was the lowest we finished in the Premier League era. So you know, there's still quite plenty of time there uh, for uh, things uh, to be uh, turned um, around.
turn around and that. And um, <coughs> there is um, a lot of uh, players um, on our agenda that Man United uh, could sign. We need to make signings in this January transfer window. You know, I think Solskjaer's orchestrating on making at least two signings in this January transfer window. Obviously, we're going to try and uh, make uh, signings um, in the summer. And we've got a few players, you know, who we could uh, sign in the summer transfer window. So, I'll give you the news, didn't I, uh, regarding uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes uh, yesterday. Uh, initially, uh, during Solskjaer's press conference, building up to this game against Liverpool, he, uh, you know, was asked about Bruno Fernandes and he said, you know, he doesn't talk about players at other clubs. His focus is on this game today against Liverpool and that's um, only Solskjaer's uh, concern. But, you know, recently there's been <clears throat> a lot of negativity you know, regarding uh, Bruno Fernandes of what narratives have been coming out. You know, it said from the uh, BBC yesterday, like I updated you, this is from Simon Stone, who tends to be reliable the vast majority of the time. He says that, you know, Man United's attempt to sign Bruno Fernandes has stalled. The main explanation for this is, is that, you know, Man United and Sport and Lisbon cannot come to an agreement on a fee. So the fee is actually, you know, the stumbling block at the moment of Bruno Fernandes coming to Manchester United. You know, Bruno Fernandes has confirmed he wants to leave Sport in Lisbon and Sport in Lisbon are aware of this. The Sport in Lisbon boss, has, you know, he's given his overarching view on it and he says he deserves to play in the Premier League, does Fernandes. He says he's uh, not sure if his game again, if that game against Benfica was Bruno Fernandes' last game. That was supposed to be his farewell um, appearance and then obviously then he, he was supposed to be signing for Manchester United. And Sporting Lisbon play Braga next week and, you know, the Sporting Lisbon boss said, you know, he's not sure if he will be uh, playing um, in that uh, game. But reportedly, you know, Sporting Lisbon want around €80 million, Euros, which equates to around £68 million, pounds, which equates to £68 million in pounds sterling, sorry. And Man United are not determined to pay what Sporting Lisbon are demanding. You know, we are, we're only willing to pay around, is it, £44, £45 million pounds uh, up front and it did say there would be a series of add-ons um, included and these add-ons would only be activated if you know we like won the Champions League the Premier League or Bruno Fernandes won the Ballon d'Or but that's very um, unlikely that's going to happen so I think from a Sport and Lisbon perspective they are unhappy you know with the you know structure of the offer and that you know they don't uh, like it so they've actually uh, rejected uh, this bid of Sport and Lisbon I know there was a lot of rumours coming out saying that, you know, Bruno Fernandes could be in the stands for today. Definitely he isn't going to be make, making his debut now because it did say uh, on Friday that's just gone. If we'd have signed him by Friday 12pm, he would have been making his debut against uh, Liverpool would Bruno Fernandes. And yeah, but you know, the stories I said, the stories I read up yesterday about Bruno Fernandes were totally comparison to the stories that I saw on Friday because Sky Sports were coming out on Friday, which is a very reliable source. And, you know, they said that, you know, Man United are close to signing Bruno Fernandes. He says we were set to get him in a deal for around... Well, we were set to get him for £60 million. The deal was worth up to £60 million. We'd pay around £43 million up front and there'd be like £17 million in potential add-ons. And this was coming from James Cooper. And he actually, you know, is... And uh, he's um, close to uh, Man United. So, I, know, I, I, I said, you know, didn't I? You know, I thought there was a lot of trustworthy in it. I said, you know, it was going to happen, Bruno Fernandes to Man United. It was looking likely it was going to be our first signing in this January transfer window. And it was looking likely it was going to be our fourth signing overall under the um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, area. But yeah, and it says, you know, we've agreed the personal terms with him. He's agreed a contract worth around £120,000 a week because a lot of reports from Portugal were saying that he's agreed personal terms with Man United. And, you know, George Mendes has also been working on this deal, you know, because he was in the director's box spectating the Man United Wolves game. He was also in London on Tuesday. So, you know, I just don't uh, know uh, what's uh, going on, basically. So maybe we're not now going to sign Bruno Fernandes. You know, don't forget last summer, Man United went in for Bruno Fernandes. We didn't get him, no, because Sport and Lisbon wanted around £70 million last summer. You know, we only valued him £50 million. Tottenham went in for him last summer. City went in for him. Liber City went in for him. Liverpool went in for him. But I said, didn't I, Bruno Fernandes would be a great addition to the squad. He's predominantly an attacking midfielder. He's 25 years of age. And obviously, we're seeing him as an adequate replacement for Paul Pogba. And, you know... 
Bruno Fernandes spent a couple of years in Portugal with Sporting Lisbon. He extended his contract in November till 2023. I presume that's on his good run of performances. And when he was younger, he spent the entirety of his career in Italy with San Pandoria and Undernese. So I've become very, very infuriated, you know, with the news regarding Bruno Fernandes. But I think if we are determined to let more players go this year, and we know Young's gone, he's the first player to leave in 2020, we want to get incomings assured before we let uh, more uh, players uh, go. So I think the players that need to go, Jones needs to be moved on this year because he's one of the problematic players. Matic needs to be moved on. Lingard needs to be moved on because, you know, I've got element of concerns about uh, Jesse Lingard. We've got to move Jesse Lingard on. Chong needs to be loaned out. You know, some people are saying Luke Shaw needs to go. You know, Rojo maybe needs to be moved on. There was talk saying, that, by the way, that Rojo could be part of the deal of Bruno Fernandes coming to Man United. So there's definitely more players that need to leave the football club. I think we need to get rid of Ed Woodward. We need to get rid of our board. Uh, we need to get rid of the Glazers, you know, in our last game against Norwich, you know, a lot of United fans were protesting Ed Woodward and the Glazers, don't forget. So we need to see, in general, a variety of changes at the football club. We need to see a variety um, of changes um, at the football club, uh, definitely. But, like I said, if there's been a lot of reports on there saying that, you know... Pochettino could be coming to Man United at the end of the season. Like I said, he's already held their negotiations with the football club over replacing Solskjaer and that. So, we'll just see. We'll basically, you know, just see. Because us changing manager wouldn't really solve any or not many problems at the club. You know, we're not really known for the sacking football club anywhere, despite the fact that we've sat three managers since the Alex Ferguson era. And, you know, it's been revealed how much it'll cost the club to sack Solskjaer. I would have to pay around £5 million to get rid of him. But that's around £15 million less than what we paid to get rid of Mourinho. We paid £20 million to get rid of Mourinho. Plus, we paid around, was it, 8 or 9 to get rid of Van Gaal. Around 6 or 7 you know, we paid to get rid of David Moyes and that. So, we'll uh, see. But a lot of United fans feel as though that Solskjaer's had long enough. He's had long enough. But, you know, there again, you know... He's on, this is only his second transfer window. You know, last summer was his first trans, uh, transfer window. So he needs more time to get, you know, the players that he does want in. But Solskjaer still insists that we can attract, you know, players to the elite level, even though we're not uh, being very consistent. We're not in that commanding position that we should be in. So, and he says, you know, the club have got the resources and the back end of the club in general, you know, can spend a substantial amount, you know. So we will uh, see. So anyway, guys, that's your, my, my prediction for the Liverpool-Man United game. And I wanted to give you a bit more news building up to the game and everything else. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing as always. And take care, God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.